Are you looking for the best program to get you started on your live streaming on Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, and Facebook gaming? Well, you're in luck because XSplit just dropped their brand new 4.0 version of Gamecaster, and it promises to be better than everything out there, and we're gonna take a look at it and do a deep dive right after this. Looking to upgrade the production value within your stream? Look no further than owned.tv. From overlays to alerts to stinger transitions to emotes, Own3D has got you covered from beginner to professional. Simply find a graphic or design that fits your style and flair for your stream. And before you purchase, you can see how it will look with their interactive showcase. It's time you became bigger and better by heading over to owned.tv by clicking in the links below. Hey all, wow for games here to help you become bigger and better. And if this is your first time here and you want to learn all the tips and tricks that's going to make you a better streamer and content creator, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button and tick that bell so you know when my videos go live for you. And hey, really quick, if you like the product or the service that I'm talking about, I did you all a favor. I put links in the show notes below, so make sure you check them out. Picking a software to broadcast out your live content creations or gameplay is a pivotal part of deciding what type of streamer you want to be or what type of assets you want to allocate into your stream. And there's a lot of great services out there. You have OBS, you have Streamlabs, you have Muxy, Player.me, and that's just to name a few. But XSplit just came out with the brand new 4.0 version of their Gamecaster. The new Gamecaster has a ton of in-game assets and elements, graphics, overlays that you can add to your stream with just one click or one drag to make it fully customizable. In fact, they have over hundreds of free templates that you can use to make your stream look that much more unique than the competition. And with everything just being one click or a click and drag, you are just easy up and running within just a few moments. Essentially, Gamecaster takes the best of both worlds. It takes OBS and Streamlabs and combines the best parts to create Gamecaster 4.0 for all brand new streamers out there. Now that I've piqued your interest, let's head on over the computer so that way you know how to use this program by the end of this video. But just really quick, if you are interested in this program, make sure you download it. Of course, links in the description down below. Once you've downloaded, installed, and gone through the tour of the program, the very first thing you want to do is go to the top right corner where it has your account information and go under settings. This will give you all the streaming, recording, and device settings that you need to have. Now it's really cool because Gamecaster automatically detects what program you logged in from and will broadcast out to that platform. Since I logged under Twitch, it'll automatically always stream to Twitch. But if you need to change anything, you can always stream to YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Mixer. I'm sure they'll add more at a later point, but this is what you have access to. Under recording is obviously where you can record to and what output you want the video files to go. Make sure you put it somewhere in a nice dump file so that way it's easy to have access to so they don't get lost in the jumble of all of your other videos that record down from other platforms. As we continue devices, these are the devices obviously that you'll be using for your streaming setup. It'll have your default audio, your microphone, as you can see it's going up and down, and it'll auto detect what webcams are plugged into your computer or machine at the moment. As you can see, I've got two plugged in here, which is using my Logitech Rio at the moment for when I stream out to Twitch. You can also do your hotkeys, language, accounts, and about me. The one important piece of information I want to make sure you do, if you plan on using this, is make sure that you have the enabled in-game HUD on, which we'll get to in a little bit later of this video because it's really cool. With all of your settings with the way they need to be, go ahead and exit out of this. In the top left corner, we have Studio and Themes. Themes is where you get to pick the stylized look of your stream that you'll be broadcasting out. And all of these are free from Gamecaster. You can pick from any type of animated or static or genre or even colors that you like. For me, I went ahead and picked this one right here, which is why it's already in my studio. And it won't let me delete it because you need to always have at least one scene open. So we'll start the tutorial technically from this spot. Once you've picked a theme, it'll put it over here on the left-hand side as a source. 
If you right click on it, you can change the settings for whatever you need. You can change it to Twitch, YouTube, recording, whatever you want. And you can also select any particular icon that you want. So that way it's easily noticeable for what it is for when you need to click on it. If you need to add any other sources, simply click on the plus sign here and you can start creating brand new sets, which will be new sources that you can toggle between or use for different styles of genres of gameplays or whatever you need for your particular type of content creations. At the bottom here, you will see all the scenes from the theme package that you selected. They're all displayed in a film strip mode. So depending on the person you are, this might be a better representation because at a visual glance, you get to see exactly what you're clicking on as opposed to text from Streamlabs or OBS. Now each package comes with its own set of themes. You have start, main, and intermission, but if you want to add any new scene, all you have to do is click on the scene button. And here you can create your own or choose from a theme. Let's go with create your own. When creating your own scene, the first thing you wanna do is rename it. Click on the rename and we're just gonna call this one gameplay. Make it nice and easy. Then we wanna to go to the edit function here. Now this is gonna populate in a brand new window, which may be confusing, but technically this is a window on top of the actual game caster. So don't be worried that you lost anything. Now in the top left corner is your settings for this source. And you'll see general, which will allow you to snap, which will allow you to move aligned assets within the video player. So that way you can make everything nice and uniform and to scale. Then you have advanced mode, which I'm not entirely sure what it is because it says unlocks additional features. Not really sure what that is at the moment. Perhaps it's part of the premium service. Then you have potato PC mode, which allows you to enable the PC mode to remove extra animations. So that way it increases performance for the broadcasting software, which is actually really cool that they include this because a lot of new streamers have this problem. Under general, you have editor background, which is allows you to use sample images for when you're creating a scene and third party apps. Currently the only one they have access to within this software is the Razer Chroma, but I'm sure they'll add more as this program gets a little more steam and traction. Over on the left hand side here, we have add widgets and this is where you get to add all the bells and whistles. Simply click on this and you get to see all the elements you can add. You have custom window, icon, text, custom widget, image, video, group, progress bar, and web page. Along with all the different alerts that you can add, just like you would see within stream labs or stream elements, as well as different labels you can add. In addition, you can do counters, goals, trains, and under miscellaneous, you can add things like chat, stream cup, transition, tickers, and so forth. And you can even do additional sources like camera and game source, which these are really cool because within this software program, it doesn't auto detect. Even when you switch games, it'll auto detect to the new game and snap the source into the, per uh, into the perfect window for your video player. It's really cool. Now, when you've added all the widgets and assets that you like, you can really make a cool looking setup here. And the nice thing about all these is all this can snap to a certain location and the game software makes it very easy for you to click and choose whatever you want to make changes to. And if you ever need to make any changes, all you do is click on a particular part and here we'll show you where you can make changes to as well as the lines or change the message or even colors or styles or alignment or capitalizations. Now this is just a quick run through to get you started on what you need for Gamecaster. If you want a full breakdown tutorial on how to make it the best software for you, let me know in the comments below and I will do a full rundown of a tutorial on how to use this software. One reason I think this software is so powerful for new streamers is it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Simply adding in widgets or assets of what you want, it'll automatically fetch the correct information. So when I have this lower bar down here, it'll actually grab the value of what it needs by pulling in the username, currency, and the amount. I simply just have to change the color or stylized alignment or capitalization or flair of what I want it to have. But it does everything else by fetching the correct information. So I don't have to really do anything at all, which is awesome for beginning streamers out there that are really confused on how to do things like Streamlabs or Stream Elements. Now, when you've made all the proper changes that you need to your scenes and sources here, go to the very top and click save. Then go over to test. This way you can see how everything will populate on your stream when you're live streaming. And at the bottom here, you can go to whatever test you wanna do. So here we can test a follower so you can see how it will be displayed. Or perhaps you wanna test when you get a tip sent to you. This will show you the recent tip at the bottom as well as when it populates at the top of the screen. Now, when you're all said and done, go to the top right corner and click the close button. 
And this technically is what reverts you back to the scenes and sources of your broadcasting software. Over on the right hand side is where you get to add in transitions and it comes with a bunch of different free ones that you can use to your heart's desire. So that way when you swap between sources here, you can have a bunch of different fun transitions for free. At the top right, this is where your stream events will be displayed for when you're live streaming, as well as the bottom right will display your stream chat. All the way over on the bottom left hand corner is where this will detect your camera sources and main input sources. Under camera sources, this will do its best to auto detect whatever camera is currently plugged in that you wanna use for your stream. At the moment, it's detecting my Logitech Brio because that's what I want it to detect. When we go over to main input source, this is where it will be told to capture any game on this PC or I can tell it to capture a console or another device like a capture card. Also at the bottom, you will see system sound and microphone. Now, when I click on these, it technically crashes the program. So I'm gonna say don't click on these, but I have a feeling it's because I'm using another software at the moment to record this footage. But the nice thing is if it actually does crash your system, it'll reload within a simple click of the button and get you right back up and running within just a few seconds. The bottom right will show you how long you've been streaming for as well when you're on and offline, plus the view count of what's going on within your stream. And the cogwheel takes you directly to settings. One of the really cool things about this software is the auto detect feature with like the camera and the microphone and everything like that, but also with the gameplay. So if I launch right now at the moment, enter the gungeon that I'm gonna play on stream. The actual broadcast software will grab within just a few seconds here, the gameplay and snap everything in correctly for where it needs to be. And this is awesome. No more fuddling around with resolution sizes or manual changes that you need to do. You can swap from one game to the next and it does this virtually flawlessly, which is huge. Now, one of the coolest things about Gamecasters 4.0 version is the in-game HUD that allows you to be used when you're broadcasting from the software. And sadly, there's no real easy way for me to show you this because it's kind of like a hidden asset on top of a video player that won't allow me to grab it. So I have to use their YouTube footage here. But what it does, it allows you to display different types of information that you can pin widgets on top of the screen. And all you have to do is simply click Control Tab and it'll take you to the screen where you can see things like uh, what's happening on with the chat, any recent events, hosts or viewer counts or anything like that. And I believe you can add more widgets in the future when this will come out. But this is really cool if you're limited on monitor space or real estate space for your gameplay because it's kind of an all-in-one game asset. And when I was using it, I used it a lot more than I thought I would because it's so easy to click to see what's going on with your stream, especially when you're playing a high action game. Now, like I said, this is just a quick rundown of XSplit's new Gamecaster 4.0. And I actually think the program is really cool. And it's probably one of the better things to get you started out there if you're a brand new streamer. Now, it's a little convoluted on a few things like with the film strip mode at the bottom. And there's just so many things you can do over to the left. But once you figure it out, it's very streamlined and very easy. And in fact, if you just use the theme packages, you don't have to do anything at all. You can get streaming within just like 60 seconds, which is awesome. Now, like I said, this is just in beta, so there's gonna be a few hiccups here and there, but hey, it's a free program that could probably be a game changer for a lot of brand new streamers dipping their toes into streaming out there. So if you like the program or you wanna give it a try, I say click on the links down below and give it a shot and let me know what you think. Now, one of the big issues I had with Gamecasters is I couldn't find any articles or publicized information on on if it's actually better than platforms like OBS and Streamlabs. I couldn't find anything about if it's you know easier on the CPU or RAM or the way that it does encoding is cleaner or better or it's less of a, of a, a task on your machine. I couldn't find anything like that. So if you find anything, do me a favor, leave me a comment down below or if XSplit, if you see this video, how about you publicize some stuff so that way we can get a little more educated on your program. Now, if you're a new streamer out there, XSplit's Gamecaster is probably gonna be a good direction for you to go, but it's not the only thing you need to learn about if you're gonna be newly streaming to platforms like Twitch. You need to learn about the new channel points and rewards, which I'm gonna put a video over here to the side, so that way you can get all cut up to speed so you know how to use those properly as well. Once again, my name is Wild for Games, and I will see all of you beautiful people in my next stream support video. Take care all, and peace!